Hi, this is Paris. I saw on the doctor's show yesterday the subject of free-range kids being brought up. It's a term coined by, uh, well, it seems to particularly focus on this woman who's written some books about it and does this um, unsupervised playgroup in New York Central Park where you can pay her to take your kids to the park and not pay attention to them at all while they're playing and then she'll either bring them back to meet you at a later time or else they can just go home by themselves. And this is called Free Range Kids. The idea behind it makes a lot of sense. It's that kids are too, their lives are too overstructured, parents are too micromanagey and too involved, and that kids should have time to develop on their own how they'd like to and to make some mistakes here and there and have to recover from them, have to get in trouble occasionally for things that they've done. That's how they learn. And if you don't give them those opportunities, they won't develop properly. So free-range kids is good in theory, um, just like free-range chickens. If you go to the supermarket, you can pay a little extra, sometimes a lot extra, and get eggs from free-range chickens, which technically, um, according to the USDA, only means that the chickens are allowed outside of cages. It doesn't say for how long or in what area or how many tens of thousands, maybe in a small area together, but that, that's an issue for another video. Basically, it means they're allowed out of where they're out of their cages. And so to allow kids out of their cages, presumably would be their homes, to let them go out and to free range around the neighborhood at the neighborhood park, walk to their friend's house without you having to drive them and so forth. So free range being good in theory, the downside of free range, as you can ask someone who's had chickens, is what can happen to the chickens. The overall, the chickens will have a better quality of life having lived a free-range existence, but the price that you can pay is not all the chickens may make it to adulthood. There are risks in the environment. Uh, with This isn't an exact parallel, but with chickens, there are um, environmental dangers, yeah, depending on how big an area you give the chickens to go out in the pasture or something. They could fall in a bucket of water and drown. They could get caught under something. They could eat something off the ground that um, maybe somebody had done some uh, BB gun shooting or something with lead pellets and they eat the lead and they die from that. You're not there to control what's going on. They're in an unsupervised environment. And then there are the predators, which for chickens would be hawks, um, owls, coyotes, dogs. Um, there are lots of animals that like to eat chicken besides us. And so when you let the chickens out unsupervised, those are the risks. They'll have a more enjoyable life but there's a fair risk you're gonna lose some of them. And so if that trade-off is worthwhile, in the case of the chickens, I guess we have decided that it is, if the farmers, his, assuming he doesn't have an emotional attachment to his chickens, simply a financial one, that he doesn't wanna lose them in free range, but if he can charge more for the eggs, if he can charge more for the meat, it offsets the cost of losing some chickens to environmental causes and uh, predators. But when it comes to your kids, is it worthwhile for the population of children of the country overall to have that improved quality of life when the price you're going to have to pay for that is you're going to lose some of them. Lose some of them to getting hit by cars, to picking up something off the ground they eat that poisons them, to predators that are in our society. So is it worthwhile the risk of not all the kids making it to have a better environment and a better childhood and youth for the rest of the children. So that's what it comes down to. Of course, though, it's really not all or nothing. It's about drawing the line. How comfortable are you letting your kids, at given ages, of course, this changes, to walk over to the friend's house that's down around the corner and you can't quite see them the whole way there. You kind of you know, lean out the window and look as far as you can and call me when you get there. But you don't insist on driving them. Uh, letting them go to the playground if they tell you they'll be home at a certain time. Even in your house, um, where your kids are safe and you've child-proofed it and you think they're, they're all set. You know, the kid goes and opens the cabinet underneath, uh, um, over in the, the laundry room and finds those new tied gel pack things and, hey, that's great looking. So you, even where you think they're safe, there's always risk. And you can't lock the kids in their crib until they're 10 or 12 years old, obviously. So it's all a balance of how much risk you can stand and that you're willing to accept that your children you know, could get hurt and fall down and they're bleeding, you're not there to help them. How much of that risk you can stand versus the reward of the children growing up to become independent and self-reliant. 
And I'm sure it's a pendulum that goes both ways. And maybe when people my age were growing up, it was, you know, way over towards kids can be self-sufficient, you know, come home before dark. And that was about the only instructions. Don't get in trouble, come home before dark. And now it's swung too far the other way where you're afraid to let the kids play in the front yard if you aren't there to watch them. So it, it may be out of balance either way, and we do need to get it more towards the center. But I think the, the, what this woman is offering in taking your kids and not providing any supervision whatsoever, it just doesn't make sense to me. Um, you could do that yourself for free, take your kids to the park and not pay attention to them. So that's um, my thinking on free-range kids.